Desm. You're watching Jim Desm and welcome back to From the Depth. This is the episode 5 of building a super battle carrier and since we didn't have an episode of this series last week I have been building extra much on this little build. So this is uh, the version from uh, last time if you haven't tuned into that please check back so you can see the full process you have the playlist in the description. And uh, why are we making this series? Well, this is a reminder. This is for our Stellar Admiral LCG Canyon, a mega beyond huge project. The largest thing I've ever built, uh, 500 meters plus long. It's like um, 560 meters long. So it's, it's a really big one and it's a carrier and uh, we're building it for LCG Canyon because he is indeed our top patron the admiral level if you also want to become a uh, commissioned officer in the army of jimmyism please check uh, the link the video for that is i think it's pretty cool anyways uh, turning back we can see here um this ship now has absolutely uh, some powerful combat capabilities the uh, turrets are in place we have auxiliary energy generation down here Oh yes, we have some uh, steam turbines there on both sides and uh, because we also have them being kind of floaty it also is very hard to sink this thing for sure. Uh, one thing that it however lacks is of course it, it lacks a lot of armor, it lacks a lot of auxiliary guns and it lacks the main missile barrage. Right now we have an armor percentage of 41% and we of course want to decrease this so it has more firepower. So uh, let us uh, check at the next uh, upgraded step on this little build. And there we have it. Now you can see that we have added a good more parts of the armor chunks on the sides of this uh, ship. Because it's so large it also takes a lot of time to build this thing. Um, so, if you didn't think that, <laughs> I think you would understand if you've ever built something from the depth, but yes, we've been fleshing out the armor on this thing here. Uh, and also added some of the sea uh, uh, scans. These are uh, anti air, uh, like anti missile, miss uh, anti missile cannons which are shooting down incoming shells and stuff like that with uh, flak like we did in the instant tutorial. We are doing with alloy for the top of the armor because the turrets themselves as you, as you have seen before are pretty well armored. Uh, so we only want an outer shell and we do not want to make it in metal because that would turn out to be too heavy. We are, however, uh, making sure we have a lot of connection points for the turret. In case we take heavy damage, we want the turrets to still be uh, active and online and fighting. So here we have some places to play some turrets in the future too. These holes I've decided to uh, make anti-missile missiles. So let's check our next little uh, iteration. And now I've started to add some auxiliary cannons and defenses. Here you can see medium anti-missile missiles. And we have, uh, well, three diff guns. So these are 500 millimeter direct input fed guns. Uh, they are very cheap, but deal a lot of damage. Here we have some uh, anti-missile cannons going on there, some classical Seawiz some more of these and some standard anti-missile missiles. So this is basically the outer edges and uh, we're going to add a few more cannons here but what we are having here is well extra damage dealing systems that are basically designed to be okay if we lose them they are not valuable um, and the anti-missile defenses to back up the lamb node we have right there. We've also been fleshing out the hull pretty much. Um, 
the front here has its final form. Uh, we got some spaces for turrets there. And here we have a very nice little triangular window which hosts a camera and a laser um, targeter which is EMP insulated right there. So it's uh, it's very hard to take out that with EMP, so it's really nice. And I thought it looked pretty cool with this little uh, sharp triangle. It looks kind of futuristic. So uh, I think that's the main thing that has been happening, uh, except I have been tuning the engine a lot. I have been uh, designing and fixing, so it's a little bit more, uh, it works. I think this is that version anyways. Yeah, you can see here, I've basically removed one of these. We now only have one uh, of these uh, gener generators and they are set up at a certain limit. So even when we are under heavy load in terms of engine and recharging the, uh, um, the guns, it's not slowing down too much because we have like insane energy requirements. Uh, using railguns are never going to be the most efficient way to deal damage. Uh, it's gonna be so expensive in terms of, uh, well, the railgun parts, parts for ones, but also actually having the infrastructure to reload those railguns. But we have a pretty sturdy in infrastructure against uh, for that, and we're going to make it even larger. So that is what we have been up to during this point, uh, and we're now going to look at the uh, next upgrade. Here we have the next little um, upgrade, and uh, if you look carefully, you can see that we added more auxiliary turrets. We also added uh, some uh, anti-missile uh, turrets here at the sides. So they're kind of uh, protected like that and they have uh, limited their movement speed so they don't accidentally shoot at anything. Then to help with incoming crams and big missiles, we are also having some uh, Sea Wiz Def Guns, which are very cheap and very effective at crack some really dangerous uh, stuff that might be incoming. So we have them there. We also outlined and shaped a little protecting ridge for the Def Guns as well as, uh, well, some larger caliber diff sieves out there. So this outer rim is basically filled to the brim with uh, cheap and effective defensive turrets and uh, in the case of, well, 12 really high damage diff guns which will fire a 500 millimeter Hesh shell. So. Other than that, we have been diving into some experiments with, um, <laughs> well, with custom jet engines in order to help with the uh, uh, battery recharge in case any of our current engines would get damaged. And uh, I think I added this cool little detail, which I was quite happy about too recently. Anyways, next, next version. So we have built and encapsulated this um, jet engine here, encapsulated it, uh, tried to pump out the water of this area and realized it won't work because it's underwater. So this part of the jet engine cannot be, like the, the controller block just can't be underwater, even if we put it in an encapsulated space and pump out the water, it doesn't work. So we'll just have to delete that section and move it somewhere else. Um, other than that, we've been doing some more shaping. I think we added some uh, uh, spall liner to many parts of the uh, alloy armor to defend a little bit better against Hesh. And we also have been starting to line up one another of our auxiliary weapons. This is going to be an auxiliary mortar system that's actually cram mortars. And because this is a high tech build and we want to avoid low tech um, things a little bit, one might think that mortars would be out of the question. But these are not going to be your average mortars. These are going to be EMP mortars. 
So they are going to deliver a 200 millimeter EMP payload that is kind of high. It's not going to do any other type of damage other than hardener to uh, make them sturdy. It's going to drop an absolutely dangerous EMP blast and we're going to try and make them look a little bit high tech too. And I just wanted to have the mortar cram system because a lot of people do not protect their vehicles very well from above. And adding this can be a cheap way to uh, combat some much more competent designs uh, with an easy little trick. Because it's hard to defend against the mortars and uh, they are gonna, going to be pretty heavy on the hardeners too. So they are also here to kind of drain the lamb system. Just the same way the Draconia uses its mortars mainly to uh, drain the enemy lambs. If we dive into here we can see we added how the armor should look like uh, in this little um, AI compartment. We should just probably set up some settings there and then uh, close it in and add some water pumps. Because as you may notice this uh, ship is going too low. And I absolutely agree it's definitely going too low. And we have these air pumps in here to just make sure it does not go uh, lower than this. Uh, but we are going to make it go a lot higher when we can use this interior surface area to actually have air pumps and this will enable it to go much higher in the water. I did test that. Here I've also added uh, two slabs of uh, this steamed pork uh, prefab well, steam engine with some uh, small electric loading capabilities too. And this thing is basically producing 23k per block. Uh, so it's really giving us an auxiliary energy um, production that's gonna be very hard to run out for sure. And we even added another one here. So we really want to have uh, engines here and there just so that not all of them are taken out at the same time. Uh, because we want to be operational even though we've gotten a uh, mortar or a cram slug or a, like um, an APS super crazy shell straight through our main engine. We just still want it to be operational. Right, so let's take a look at the next upgrade iteration build. And remember, it's like uh, between like half an hour and like several hours between each of these versions. Sometimes it's hard to see when we do <laughs> different settings and playing around with small stuff like that. But uh, yeah, so uh, this is work for like several days and also because I did so much boring things it's really good that uh, we didn't do it like last week because then I could actually give you some results that also look cooler. In any case let's look at the next version. And there we have it. Here we can see. I don't know if you can see but we have been uh, fleshing out some more parts of the hull and there they are. The EMP mortars. I thought they looked pretty high tech with the railgun parts. I did the same thing as for the APS can to make them look um, similar in some way. Uh, so I added some railgun magnets onto them just to make them look pretty cool I think. And you can see I've uh, they have some exterior armoring. They're pretty well armored like they themselves the firing piece is surrounded by uh, heavy armor. But other than that, it's mainly metal. Um, and they just have connection points going down here. Uh, and they have two of them in case one of them gets shot off from below by a torpedo or something. Because of course, these cram mortars would be taken out by torpedoes most likely if they manage to get through this initial um, like ski. Um, or how it's called. How, how is the secondary hull bodies on the sides? It's like, it's not skis, it's like the catamaran thing. Anyways, pontoons almost, but not really. So here we have the cram system. They are, uh, they have a fairly slow reload speed. Um, or like not fairly slow, not in terms of what it is, but 18 seconds, a so pretty standard uh, dealing uh, 38,000 kinetic damage 
and having EMP damage of, uh, it's a little bit different, but 42,000, uh, this is uh, 27,000. And this middle one, they're actually not set up to detonate at a certain altitude. Like these are set to detonate below water. So we really could get into interiors of enemy ships, for example. Uh, but actually match it to the uh, altitude of the enemy target. So they're basically to work, uh, set up to work against our ships too. Uh, but these are set up to have uh, hollow point shells instead so they will deliver the EMP load on the hull of the ship and they will also deal some huge impact damage when they uh, hit down on uh, thin shells too. So the mill ones are actually doing some kinetic damage too. It's, it's good to have a little bit of a mix. Other than that we have been setting up the... here we have it. Here we have a uh, custom uh, jet engine which is set up to only uh, load the batteries actually. It loads the batteries with 10,000 uh, second uh, and it works pretty well inside of here. Um, it's only activated when needed of course. And here you can see we have added the uh, anti-missile missiles, a little barrage here. And it is also EMP insulated, so this won't be destroyed by uh, close by EMP. You can see they're completely insulated, so that's pretty nice. All right, some decorations on the hull, and uh, we're getting close to what I have done um, during this session. I don't, I guess they were here before. This is anti torpedo torpedo uh, turrets. We have four of them, pretty big, but <clears throat> well, they take out light torpedoes at least. Um, maybe we're going to have a super cav turret below here to actually shoot at incoming torpedoes. But we'll see about that a little bit later. Uh, right now, we have other ways to deal with those as well, like these sides here. But um, yeah, let's check at the last iteration for this little session. And I'm going to make this one be built block by block too, so we can see the full process. I have no idea how long this will take, but here we go. <laughs> wow, this is like <clears throat> watching us. Wow, this is pretty cool though. Yeah, very nice. So here we can see the base of the hull is taking shape. We have the... Uh, holes for the turrets. No, not the turrets. That's the, the holes for the... Oh, here we have all the compartments. Yeah. Um, thrusters, of course, or propellers. And here we have the pontoon space. It's alloy, so it's floating and everything. Wow. This is like watching myself build it all along again. So we have some ammo in part in... in front here. We have some ammo spread out here too, just to spread it out basically. Um, and each of these sections are of course air pumps too. And here we have the base floor and the uh, fastening points for the turrets. So it's like fairly unlikely that all fastening points uh, will be gone at the same time. Here we have some extra protection, stone and alloy, and that's of course for, uh, well, the lambs. These are the lambs, which you have seen me built before. And lamb system, pretty well protected there. And here we have the EMP box with some other important materials, batteries and all, sort, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, and it's of course put on a, yeah, it's basically put on a stone rubber uh, area there so that less EMP will uh, get, well, transferred over. And here we have the steam engines we just added taking shape as well as the protective layer for the turrets. So if you're wondering what is protecting our turrets, it's basically this. So it's pretty heavy duty. It's pretty heavy duty. It should remain uh, for a lot of firepower. We have a little sonar in front of here. 90 degree one. 
We of course have the 360 sonar. That's the exhaust. We have a 360 sonar somewhere down here. There it is. EMP insulated, of course. And uh, oh, I think the uh, the lamp system getting built. It's that's the thing that's like hogging and taking all that time to do. And here we have the basis of the large missiles, the vertical launch missiles as well. And they are uh, wireless, wirelessly set up. We have uh, stone, rubber, the rubber insulated, so they can't be uh, hit by, they, they can't be taken out by big, uh, big bad EMP basically. We have stone, wood, stone, metal, some alloy is coming on top of that later. They should be fairly well protected. And since they are all individual, um, like you'll have to destroy each of them to make them be destroyed since each of them has a uh, or should have a transmitter. Each of them should have a wireless transmitter. I I think I, I think that's how I set it up anyways. Let's maybe check here down just that just to make sure. Yeah, each of them has a receiver good. So they're kind of individual, which is very good for a big expensive system like that. Ooh, the AI compartment, I have sealed it now and this entire compartment will be sealed as well during this little, uh, well, section. Wow. It's taking, sh oh, we missed the engine too. It's kind of fun to go through here. Oh yes, we kind of missed the, the, the cram cannons. They are getting built up. And here we are, the engine is already running. That's why we have been gaining some speed here. And we have the battery boxes here, inside of there. And some really um, heavy armor for the engine in the back here. So really this engine will probably not be taken out by uh, shots coming from the sides. It's probably gonna be from the above, um, if they are to go. Oh, and now we got the basis of the, like the, the base plates of the landing boards, but of course there will be a space in between, uh, in which where we will, will be spawn, will in which we are having both uh, energy generation there in the back, um, some ammo storage, uh, air pockets in case of. Uh, if, if we're getting too low, as I said before, it's going to go higher when we are adding uh, our pockets in the main hull too. But we basically have the landing boards be alloy beneath there, just in order to make them really be able to take uh, damage and still be floaty. Because we want these to also ensure us so that it's basically impossible for us to roll. We're so flat. If, if we just lose and get a lot of holes in us and start to sink, we're not going to uh, flip over in any way. Oh yeah, cool. So here are the AI, uh, the processing units. We have some extra processing there, which are just adding to the main power of the AI. And here we have the energy generation too. You might imagine that our AI is just so big. It needs to be so big and have so much processing power because these vertical missiles, they are remote guided, which means we need a lot of general processing power for sure. Well, well, the third wells are certainly taking shape. We have uh, the deck armor going on and the air pockets. You can see that the air pumps is kind of fairly a long bit away from the ammo boxes. So this section will not chain react. It should just be uh, kind of stable like that. And here we have the top of the landing boards and that's metal. Um, it's possible we have to change some of it to alloy later, uh, just in order to make it um, 
lighter if our air pockets does not do the job. I have also compartmentalized the outer sides of this AI box uh, in order to have air pockets like four of them there. And we're gonna have more air pockets like that to make us floaty. But if we're just too heavy, uh, the top deck, which is getting added in white metal here, can be replaced by white alloy. And it's not gonna be a big difference, but having metal will ensure it's taking less pack damage, like lesser chunks would get lobbed off in case of that, uh, as well as giving a slight boost to the rubber blocks on Bob. I think they get the boost at least. And oh, here we have the hull taking shape, uh, the interior support points because the first turret is always the one that takes the most damage just because of initial volleys and stuff like that. Oh, and I didn't like the the pointy shape of the uh, the shape that's holding the uh, landing pads, landing board, landing. What what are they called? The uh, uh, landing strips. Yes, uh, the, the 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 kind of connection strut that was holding in the landing strut in the landing strips. I didn't like them, so I changed the shape of them. If I forgot to mention that. Um. And there we have the landing strips popping up here. <clears throat> like when when you have come a significant way with your shipbuilding, it can probably be a good idea to actually make it build it block by block like this. And you will certainly be able to spot some eventual mistakes you might have made very easily. So I think that's kind of useful indeed. And now it's just so big, it of course takes a little bit of time, but uh, I hope you also think, uh, think it's pretty enjoyable to just watch this thing getting constructed. Oh, and there we have the next turret well popping up there. The top armor on the alloy piece is getting added. And this is a thing I forgot to talk about, but inside of here, let's just go backwards a little bit. I've actually added a new defensive system. So here we're having an anti, uh, well here we have a decoy for the first part. It's basically a sonar target simulator uh, and yeah, and in this sonar target simulator, they're just very strong, both of them. And they have a harpoon with some rope, so they are hanging 600 meters below the vehicle. And inside of this, we are having cluster extenders, extensions. We're having cluster containers. So when this thing launches, it's pretty funny, it actually releases anti-missile torpedoes or anti-torpedo torpedoes. So it's a cluster missile having anti-torpedo torpedoes and it just released them from like somewhere else. And I thought it was a cool idea to have a decoy that launches um, like anti-torpedo munitions. So yeah, because um, the enemy torpedoes, if they are sonar seekers, they will go for these targets. And in order to protect the targets and also destroy the missiles, we can just have them shoot anti-torpedo torpedoes and it should be a super win-win. So I thought that was pretty cool. Right, um, the hull is taking shape. I've added a nice entrance here. Just uh, we'll see what we'll do with that. But it's just a little entrance hall thing. Uh, because we want several entrances, because it's a large ship, it should just have it. And um, this ship is, of course, um, LCG Canyon wanted this ship to be more efficient than it is uh, like design good looking and I always have a hard time at making it not be uh, design the max priority. <laughs> Sometimes I do at least. So um, of course I'm not sure we're gonna actually have some proper big interiors on this thing. It's not the main point of this ship but it absolutely needs to look okay from 
from the outside and worst case scenario we can just make a little uh, entrance way into the interiors of the ship because um, well we can make some basic wooden interiors of the ship that can look pretty cool. Uh, not that we will like line all the surfaces with wood and make it like big holes, but we can make some areas that are kind of holes with walkable um, interiors just for fun. But that's gonna be added later. Nothing like that will be added before uh, we're actually having the full combat capabilities and armoring scheme already set up so that will come later of course now i wonder why oh i wonder why it feels like the building process kind of stopped here it probably didn't we can see that none of the turrets have been added so far I don't see any block getting added to be honest, but we have removed most of the pink uh, support structure. And uh, whoops, okay, it's 84 percentages and it's okay. It just stopped building block by block. I think that's because it's going to start to spawn in turrets now. And for some reason, it's um, it's weird about that. But now we can see the defenses of these here. We have uh, heavy armor on the deck part, and then below we have so much other armor. It's just uh, alloy and metal going on there. Um, I've fixed these lamb nodes here, so we have two basic lamb nodes, EMP insulated, of course, back here, and we're gonna have a larger one overhanging uh, on top of there. Inside of here, we can see that it's not like an entrance per se, but we are having entrance compact uh, like uh, possibilities via this portion. So I'll just remove this and spawn in the full ship so we can see it with armor and uh, everything. Uh, I mean, with turrets and everything, because it's now it's just a slab of armor, like just for fun. Now we have armor cost 39%. What? And there we have it, the full ship so far. I remain the, this thing because it kind of outlines the level of the barrels, so the auxiliary extra turrets that will be in front of this needs to be below the pink bar. Other than that, you can see, wow, it's looking pretty splendid indeed, or I think so at least, you can think what you want. It's it's large, that you'll have to give it, it's large, except you secret advisor, I think you know, I, I know you think this thing isn't large, but um, it's large. And a secret advisor makes humongous things in wood only, and they're absolutely insane, and... Uh, if it costs 2 million, a few computers could even spawn it in. But anyways, uh, we're not building that. Um, this is large without being entirely made out of wood. Like, darn. We have a lot of wood in this thing, and that's because it's great bulk health material. But it's a completely different ballpark to build something only out of wood. Um, yeah. And uh, with this setup, we tweaked and fixed the engines and everything should be running smoothly and we should not have any type of engine uh, slash... Well, we shouldn't have any type of uh, engine slash energy deficit, even when taking some damage. It's, uh, it should be a quite powerful ship indeed. And with that said, I think that uh, this is how far we are going in this little episode and of course I think this episode has been a lot more progress than usual but um, it's different a little bit uh, from time to time uh, it's a big project but it's real fun to work for, for work on and uh, well I'm I'm especially hoping that you are a stellar admiral in the army of Jimidism uh, LCG Canyon uh, or enjoying the process and the ship we're building as well so far if you have any points or things uh, that you um, think should be um, added or stuff like that you know where you you know our personal discord chat yeah 
in any case for everyone else of you uh, thanks a lot for watching i hope you're enjoying this series so far and uh, asteria and scuba rocks i'll be working on your projects um, i'll make some videos and stuff with that too of course but that will be something that is coming up in any case Thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to leave a like on this video and do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. The playlist is in the description if you've missed earlier parts. This is your host Jim Esman, I'm signing out.